Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Know Your Gear podcast number 227. Hope everyone is doing fine. I'm going to dim that down just a little bit, a little bright. Uh, <laughs> so it's another week of stuff about guitar. And uh, as always, we start the show with uh, letting you guys know if you're new to this podcast live, uh, if you're trying to, to start a subject or a question towards me, get it towards me, please put the question mark first. That way you know it's to me. Otherwise, I assume you're talking to each other. Um, if you're watching the rebroadcast, I timestamp all the things that we talk about, or at least most of the things we talk about. So uh, you can go right to that. And then if you're listening on the podcast, just sit back and, and listen. Uh, so lots of questions already. Uh, I was really shocked a lot. <laughs> it's like usually get a few, but there was a lot today. So we have a lot of things to talk about and, um, and, uh, we'll get into that. <laughs> Not even sure where to start. Normally I start with the first questions asked. I will address some of the first questions. These are the, uh, the viewers that come before the show starts, but, um, there was some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, questions that I thought were a little bit more pressing or interesting to hit right off, uh, right out the gate, so to speak. Um, and, uh, this has been, uh, emails have been coming to me about this, uh, all, all week, last couple of weeks and, uh, something I was uh, and w aware of, which is, uh, if you haven't heard, Sweetwater was in a deal with a equity firm. In other words, where the equity firm purchased uh, Sweetwater. Chuck Sirak, the president of Sweetwater, has stepped down, and now I think he's the chairman of the board. I don't know who the new CEO or the president of Sweetwater is. Uh, I, I really haven't paid attention, to be honest with you. Um, this was information that was kind of coming out uh, in July, Early in July, maybe late in June, and I might have actually been told in June, um, not by anybody at Sweetwater, by by somebody in the industry. Um, as you know, I I'm friends with a lot of uh, owners of some companies that we enjoy here on the show, and um, I think one of them in passing said something to me, and, and we talked about it briefly. And I want I want to think that was in June, um, so I don't know how long this has been in the works. Um, but of course, the question, of course, the question is, you know, what's going to happen? Is it going to turn out like Guitar Center? Um, well, you know, I know as much as you guys. Uh, however, there's a couple things I thought I would uh, talk about. There's a couple things I, I always like to try to give you guys insight. If I have some, share it with you. So let me share some insight with you and also share that this is all speculation. OK, I can only do what you guys can do. Speculate. No one knows the future, not even Sweetwater. <laughs> OK, so um, the first thing that I heard of, from a lot of viewers is this is like the uh, when Bain Capital kind of acquired the controlling interest or the interest in Guitar Center. Um, this is it, it could be because you got to understand this is where it gets a little interesting. There is something in common with when Bain uh, kind of acquires Guitar Center and now this equity firm. Uh, acquires uh, Sweetwater. And um, and so if anyone interested, I put a link to the article down below. I want to make sure it's there. Yep. Uh, from uh, from the company that, uh, that, that acquired them. But here's what's in common with it. What's in common, what they do have in common is uh, that was during a boom. If you guys remember before the recession, uh, that's when Guitar Center is purchased by Bain Capital. And it was during a boom. And that's the simulator here. We're in a boom, and uh, especially a guitar sales boom. And so now a company acquires them. So what happened with Guitar Center, besides the fact that Bain shoved some debt into them and there was all kinds of other problems, the biggest problem with Guitar Center's deal was they did the deal and then the recession hit. So that is where this is. In, these things are aligned. In other words, if this boom is to stop and we go into some kind of recession where there is a huge slowdown or something happens, uh, that will be a, an interesting situation. Um, and that's where the simulators kind of end. The difference is, is, first of all, not all equity firms are equal. In other words, they don't all act the same way. Uh, I'm not a big fond believer, like a lot of you. I'm not a big, I don't have a lot of faith in big corporations, especially equity firms. So if a lot of you are concerned that like, hey, this is going to be a bean counter controlling thing and it's less guitar stuff, you're probably right. You're probably right. But what I can give you, this is what I'm saying. I can give you insight. Let me give you some insight to what's happened in the last year. In fact, year and a half. Um, I, I, as a YouTuber, have um, been an affiliate of Sweetwater. That's my connection to Sweetwater. I, I'm sure you guys see. I've said this a, 
a thousand times. I feel like I've been saying this for, for so long. Uh, if you've been watching the show, you've heard me say it over and over again, that if Sweetwater wanted to, every guitar channel could be a Sweetwater channel, basically. You would be watching Sweetwater ro- watermarks on every channel because um, if you take what even bigger channels, and if you consider myself a mid-sized channel, if you take what channels like me or bigger channels make, Sweetwater could stroke a check for double that, and it wouldn't even make, be a big deal for them and just to do advertising. And of course, it would be a hard thing to say no to, to security. You know what I mean? Having some kind of endorsement or sponsorship program. And as you guys know, there's crap tons of channels that are almost fully sponsored by them as well. I dabble with uh, Sweetwater as I do with uh, AMS, as you guys know. And I've even worked with Sam Ash, and I try to keep that relationship to those three stores. I like those three stores, and I do business with them. And I know I own I owe no loyalty to any one of them more than the others, and they all know that. But uh, where does this connect? <laughs> well, um, where this connects is is that, in my opinion, there is nobody like Sweetwater right now. And I don't mean like as a guitar buyer, where to get gear. That's how you guys are going to perceive that. What I'm telling you, and if you haven't been paying attention, this everything that you're talking about today with this acquisition, uh, I've been talking about for the last two years. And if you haven't been paying attention, I think you're about to. Um, Sweetwater, in my opinion, dominates the online market. It dominates it. And in fact, it dominates it. It owns it. And it wants more of it. In my personal experience, I have... And I'm just a small YouTube channel. I've beaten my head into the table trying to get other retail companies to even get close or move their ship towards what Sweetwater has been doing. And funny enough, I swear to God, I feel like this is 100% true. They are just too naive to see it or don't care. And I really don't think that they don't care. I think they just don't. They're naive. They don't see it. Let me explain what I mean by that. Last year, 2020, this channel received... 18 million views on YouTube collectively across my all, all my videos. I don't mean the videos I made last year. That's just all my videos. So so YouTube you YouTube was uh, YouTube sampling. In other words, it was 18 million views uh, for the year. On all my videos, there are Sweetwater affiliates. Like I said, I have affiliate links down below. There's affiliates on every one of these shows. There's affiliates to Reverb. There's affiliates to Amazon. There's affiliates to Sweetwater. Nothing performs like Sweetwater affiliates. And it is crazy to see the amount of money that I see cycling to them through these affiliate links. And when in discussions with other companies about maybe doing affiliates, when I see seven figure sales, no exaggeration, just from my channel, okay? So, so that's crap tons of gear <laughs> being sent in one direction to the Sweetwater direction. And like I said, I own them no loyalty over anyone else. I work with everyone. Uh, I respect everyone. When I say, hey, I would like to work with you. Have you ever thought about doing affiliate links? Most of the companies either don't do affiliate links, like Guitar Center. They don't do it. Uh, Sam Ash does it, kind of. Uh, AMS does not do it. So like I said, every time you see me doing an AMS video, this is a big deal. I'm going to get into this because there's some stuff I'm going to talk about. And I want you guys to be very clear. You could see I have a bias because I have worked with Sweetwater, but you also can know, I, w- I hope you understand that every time I talk about this stuff, I'm taking a risk to be, I don't want to say alienated, but cut from working for these companies. A lot of companies don't like these kind of discussions, but I think it's candid. I think it's important. And I think you guys uh, deserve it. So what I'm getting at is that it it costs me when I, because this question has come up all week, I wanted to do some analytics. And here's what I discovered. It costs me about $312 in losses not to do a video with a product that Sweetwater carries. Now, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. Every video that I make on YouTube that is of a product that is not sold at a Sweetwater, that I cannot affiliate to Sweetwater, when I went through the analytics of all my videos, I lose $312 because that's the average of what I'm pulling in affiliate link power per video. So you can see the power of that, of an affiliate power of the fact that it's a very easy system, basically, like I've said before, and, and, and I find it interesting that, uh, again, so many channels explain affiliate links wrong. I don't know if they do it on purpose or they just don't know how they work. I will always tell you guys everything because I have I, that's just what my sh- show is predicated on. How I make money on affiliate links is not 
exactly the way everybody says. What everybody says is, hey, if you click the link down below, I have links down below, they say they're affiliate links. If you click one and you make a purchase, I receive a percentage. Usually the term is a small percentage. The reason is, is because the percentages do change depending on if you're a new customer to that business. Like for instance, uh, Reverb will give you a spiff on top of a percentage if you're new to Reverb. Um, and sometimes, same with Sweetwater, if it's a direct purchase, you buy that product directly. In other words, I put, uh, let's say, the uh, Saldano. You buy that Saldano, I would get a certain percentage. I might get a lesser percentage if you bought something else. Let's say, like even though the link was for Saldano, maybe it's Freeman. It's not exactly like that. I'm just giving you general ideas. But what really is important is not that link. That's not what's important. What's really important is if you click an affiliate link, for the next 14 days, whatever you buy from Sweetwater, I will get a piece. So if in five days from now you decide to buy uh, so not something else, just something in general, I will get a small percentage of that and it will go into the pile of, of my affiliate dollars. These are so powerful uh, that one thing in common before, and like I said, before we go down the, is Sweetwater going to change? Well, let me just explain. Sweetwater to me is really no different than Amazon in the way that it works with me. I like the people at Sweetwater. That's different. I've never talked to anybody at Amazon, at Amazon, but last year when, when we saw the guitar boom, again, very upfront, uh, during the guitar boom, Amazon and Sweetwater in the height of the making money boom, both came out of nowhere and cut... Well, Sweetwater was a little later, so give them credit for that. But they both cut my percentages, all our YouTuber percentages, all affiliates. Uh, Amazon came in and basically cut our fees, and then Sweetwater came in and same thing, said cut our fees. So I make less now from those affiliate links than I was before. And uh, so, I mean, and I'm assuming they'll probably cut them again. As we make more money, they'll cut our our money because they want to keep more of it, I guess. Uh, I don't really begrudge them that. It's not my favorite thing, but it, uh, it is an opportunity. But I can't really complain about Sweetwater cutting my my funds when I can't see anyone else even trying. Now, Toman does affiliate links, but we'll get into that uh, too. And this is where it gets a little tricky. Ah, so Chad, I don't want to get too uh, sidetracked, but Chad says, what if I click multiple affiliate links? Um, first of all, it's just really the last touch kind of deal, okay? So it doesn't matter uh, what happens. So like, for instance, as you know, there's probably, I don't know how many affiliates there are for Sweetwater. There could be hundreds as far as I'm concerned. So let's say you click a video, you click a link, and whatever you do for the next two weeks. Uh, by the way, it was 30 days. That's why I say, but cutbacks, not only they cut their percentages, but they cut back the days in which you can do it. And again, I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. And uh and uh, in that time period, if you click somebody else's LinkedIn, yeah, then they uh, technically own that uh, affiliate, right? That money. So, um, but keep in mind, don't ever try to get down, don't go down that rabbit hole. When I'm talking, you guys play, I understand when I'm talking about millions of views, tens of millions of views, <laughs> right? These are, these are number equations that are just really, that's why I said, I don't think a lot of you have this perspective. Um, it's, hundreds of thousands of clicks based on tens of millions of views based on conversion rates of things. I mean, it's, you know, when, when people try to figure out how you're doing it, it's really just essentially like everything now in the world that involves the internet. If you get 10 clicks, you get nothing. If you get 10 million clicks, you get something. I mean, you have to have views to get these numbers. But here's where it gets important. Where it gets important is what I watched last year and I watched, I told you guys this, uh, again, especially during last year, um, is that Sweetwater did numbers that I don't even, I've been in this industry, like I said, coming up on 20 years in this industry in retail and repair, as you guys know, I've never seen anything like last year's numbers for anybody, much less Sweetwater. It was crazy. At, let me give you an example. I saw in December of 2019, I looked at my affiliate dollars. In other words, the money that was coming in from you guys clicking and just all the randomness. That's all it is. Somebody clicks a video, they click a thing, they buy a thing. I look at those numbers and then month after month after month in 2020, after April, it was like, it was like May, June, July, August, Christmas month, Christmas month, Christmas month um, to the point, and, and it was across the board. As you know, we've been having a boom. So what I'm basically getting at is where a lot of people are going to not see this right away, okay? So what I'm getting at, I'm sorry, I'm trying to stay focused here. What I'm getting at is that Sweetwater had a 
fantastic year. Probably record sales, record dollars earned, record everything. And you got to understand, they are, and this is just my opinion, if they're looking around right now, they're laughing at how no one's even trying to do this. There's, and I've said this a million times to you guys, I couldn't even get Guitar Center to allow me and a 3 million subscriber channel to make a free video for them to help them. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Sweetwater's actively going out to every kind of social media platform to see how they can advertise in it and live in it and, and, uh, and grow in it. And that's what this is about. So if this is my guess, and this is why I told you all the information to get to here. Why do I think this private equity deal went through? Well, I think it's because Sweetwater, I'm sure is smart enough to not only understand, I think they're number one. Okay. But I think they, like Amazon, don't want to be number one. They want to be number one, and then there's no two, three, or four. That's them as well. And then maybe five and six is somebody else. They're going to grow and grow and grow. And uh, and I see it. Um, I see it uh, in this idea. Think about this. Um, I was just telling my wife this story. I was telling her in 2018, I saw a, uh, a, a thread on the gear page, and it was on YouTubers. And so I paid attention because, you know, I was new to YouTube, uh, right? I really kind of started in 2017. It's where I kind of started, in, in, you know, thinking like, I'm going to do YouTube. And uh, 2018, I was paying attention to this thread. And one of the critiques on the thread that was interesting to me was talking about me, Dale Braun, Fluff. It was a ton of channels. And they were saying like that we were talking about a lot of brands. One of them was Dane Electro. And uh, there was a couple others, maybe Rev, something like that. A couple brands that just no one was talking about. And it was like, obviously, these brands send all these YouTubers gear. And all these YouTubers are talking about these brands. And... Very insightful comment. He was trying to be trolly, but he was really smart. He was on it. Uh, absolutely. Those companies were sending products to us and we were doing videos with them because that's what happens. If somebody sent me a guitar, if a guitar just shows up in my house, I'm going to go, hey, that's a video I can make. It doesn't cost me to do anything to do that. So what's interesting about that is that story in and of itself is not important. What's important is I went back and looked just last night at that thread and every brand that guy was talking about is now in Sweetwater, but wasn't in 2018. In fact, I found, a, I wrote down a, just a short list of brands that are in Sweetwater, like Relish, like uh, 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 Rev, like Dan Electro, <laughs> right? Um, tons of brands that were not in Sweetwater, probably not even on Sweetwater's radar, okay? But YouTubers were doing tons of videos about them. Now, again... Let me explain this to you in a way that probably hopefully makes a lot of sense to you guys. You have to understand not only is Sweetwater getting you to possibly click on a link and buy something just because a channel like me talked about it. You have to understand that by clicking a link to Sweetwater and typing in things, let's say you go to Sweetwater, let's say you click a link for, I'm going to use Bad Cat. I, I know the owner of John at Bad Cat. As you guys know, I just reviewed one of his amps. I'm going to AB the other two because I have the cabinet and the two heads right here. John is not in Sweetwater. He's at Guitar Center. So you have to understand, if you go to Sweetwater today, you click a link and you go to Sweetwater and you just type in Bad Cat. Well, if I get a video that gets 50,000 views and uh, maybe, you know, let's say 2,500 of you. Actually, I'm just going to say 500. I just want you to think about how powerful that is. 500 of you go to Sweetwater and type in the word Bad Cat. You understand what you just did. You just taught Sweetwater. They have all that. There's a Their systems track everything. They know their searches. They know what you're searching for at Sweetwater, just like any other company. They're going to look and go, wow, we had 500 searches for a product we don't carry. So... Think about that. They're, that's marketing information given to them. They have a lot of power with working with social media. And I'm not saying social media is what's making them grow. I'm saying that's one little teeny thing that they're doing. Um, you see, uh, Aaron Short Music saying Reverend is now at Sweetwater. Exactly. They just acquired them because they're acquiring a ton of brands. Uh, Holy Board. We, uh, I've been talking about Holy Board for years, and he just got into Sweetwater. Now, again, I'm not saying I had anything to do with that. Ingle, Ingle is now in Sweetwater. Ingle was not in Sweetwater before, and now they are. But you saw a lot of Ingle videos of Sweetwater because you guys liked the product and you were buying it and Sweetwater acquired it. So what I'm saying is, is I think Sweetwater, what their deal with this equity firm is, they want more money to grow because I think they're looking around and I, I, I'm guessing, I think if I was them, I'd be laughing at how no one's paying attention, right? For for interest, uh, for for sake of, um, 
I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know how to want to say this. I want to tell you guys something, but I can't tell you who I told. I, I will tell you what happened. A, a year or so ago, a friend of mine who owns a nice company was having some issues with uh, Guitar Center. And I told them uh, that they should leave Guitar Center. And in this discussion, uh, they said, uh, Phil, I don't think you understand. They have 300 stores. And I said, yeah, I don't think you understand that uh, that the future is not in the 300 stores. The future is in the 300 million cell phones. That's, you got to make sure. So in other words, I basically told them to beef up their internet pr presence. I'm not saying internet only. I'm just saying you got to beef it up. So I think this is what we're going to see. I wouldn't be shocked if we start seeing Sweetwater really, really kind of expanding into this uh, market. Now, a lot of you guys talk about global. This is, uh, I keep seeing in the comments, like going to Europe and stuff. I don't know if that Sweetwater is ga game. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that would be their interest or why. You have to understand, let's be very clear. There's there's 826 of you, and uh, basically, according to analytics, 30% uh, of you are not in the United States. So 70% of you watching are in the United States, okay? Um, let, let me be very clear. 60% of all guitars sold on the planet Earth are in the United States. The United States is the market for guitar. It will always, well, I don't want to say always be that way. It's, oh, it's always been that way. Um there's a ton of reasons why that is, but the main thing that's important is it is. This is the market everyone wants to be in. If you make a musical instrument, it's not hard to figure out that every YouTube channel you guys see is constantly going to Europe because the European companies are trying to get into the American markets because that's where the products are sold. You know what I mean? That's where they want to go. So I, I understand the concept and it could be you guys could be totally right, all you guys speculating that this is a, an ex, a, some kind of expansion for Sweetwater to go globally. I would imagine there is more market to be had in the United States than all over the world still for Sweetwater to tap into. You know, to you guys, as, as a guitar ch channel, as a bunch of nerds <laughs> hanging out on a Friday talking about guitar stuff, we all know who Sweetwater is. You just assume everybody does, but they don't. You know what I mean? Sweetwater's got a lot of gro growth to get. And... Uh, I think they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna do it. Brian says Chuck just got paid. Uh, not that he wasn't getting paid already. Yeah, he, look, he he started. You understand? He's the he's the original owner of Sweetwater. It's a billion dollar company. He did that from scratch, from his van to a billion dollars. So. Who knows? I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know Chuck very well. I've, uh, uh, I don't know him. I don't know why he. You know, this is happening from his perspective. Um, I don't get. I don't get that uh, this is a cash grab. Like he need, you know what I mean? In other words, like if he does this deal, he'll get a big payout and he'll, you know, he'll get to leave. Might be, might be like, hey, he's just like, I'm getting a little older. I want to take a bunch of money and go. It's possible. But I kind of think this is the necessary step for the, the market domination uh, <laughs> that uh, Sweetwater, Sweetwater, we saw what happened with Reaver Benetzi, right? Reaver basically... Uh, is the eBay of musical instruments. And we talked about that when that happened. And I, my prediction was they were going to raise the rates and do a bunch of stuff. And everything I predicted, they did. And not because of any, probably dumb luck, just because guessing. But, uh, I mean, educated guessing, but still guessing. But in this case, I don't get that Sweetwater, he's trying to cash out. I really think some, uh, especially because you got to think about from the private equity firm's stake. What are they after? I think they're after a, owning a market. <laughs> There's something to be saying about dominating a market. Um, and like I said, I've watched everything you guys have done since I've been here, sitting here on YouTube. And I can tell you right now, I've, I've linked you guys to Sam Ash. I've linked you to AMS. I've linked you to Sweetwater. I've sent you guys to Reverb. I've sent you guys to Amazon. Uh, I've sent you guys to mom and pop stores. Uh, anybody who, who ever gave me a link, I put it in place. And it, most of them, so you know, 90% of the links don't pay me anything. It's just trackable links to see how well or effective this was to work with this channel. And I've seen nothing like Sweetwater. Nothing. Nothing. Not even close to what you guys will do. You guys, the, 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 the community has spoken. They buy from Sweetwater. And that's why I try to kind of reiterate those mom and pop shops because, hey, we got to think about them too. Um, and the great thing is the mom and pop shops, I think they're better off with a giant Sweetwater than they are with a bunch of guitar centers jacking up everything. That's just my personal opinion, but for whatever it is. Um, 
Yeah, Quicksilver says Toman owns Europe. I'm not sure if Sweetwater wants to. I agree. Why would you want to? Y look, we already know. Anybody who's been in this industry knows what happens. There's a big, there's a, the big one that everybody knows was Mars Music, right? Remember when Mars Music fought Guitar Center and then went out of business? You know what I mean? Um, that, that's what happens. A Sam Ash Guitar Center battles. We've seen this, right? We've seen when two large retailers pound on each other. I think the world is smarter now. I think they're, they're smarter to know. Look, you guys don't realize this, and this is the main reason I don't refer, because I don't have an affiliate link with Toman. I don't refer anybody to Toman uh, for, for financial gain for me. And the reason is, is because, like I said, 70% of my audience is in the United States. And therefore, half the stuff on Tolman can't be shipped to the United States. Now, granted, you can go there and buy certain things, and you can get them shipped from Tolman, and probably cheaper, because sometimes Tolman's cheaper. They don't charge sales tax, right? It's a cheaper deal. Um, but sometimes, like, if you go to buy a Fender, Tolman's going to send you an email saying, we can't ship that product out. Because you got to understand, uh, there's that, there's, whoops, hold on a second. There you go. Uh, because you got to understand that there's deals, distribution deals in place with all kinds of manufacturers, Gibson, Fender, especially, uh, saying that how things are done. Sweetwater can't ship product to Europe. Europe, uh, Tolman can't ship certain products to the United States. So I don't think this is a, a uh, I don't personally think they're trying to grab European market or go other places, you know, Asia, whatever. It's possible. It's all possible. Who knows? But looking at what I see, I think there's still a lot of a lot of gains for Sweetwater to do here. And um, like I said, and I tell you guys this, uh, hopefully it's, uh, you know, it's enlightening. Keep in mind, like I said, I could be pissing off Sweetwater. Although, like I said, I've been very candid with you guys about Sweetwater in the past. And Sweetwater has been very cool to tell me that, you know, they're okay with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? In other words, it didn't piss them off. I've, I've had smaller companies get madder about a lot less. Let's just put it that way. Um, and then Steve says, I agree 100%. I'm just trying to grab comments with, uh, Ian Freeman, never get a deal at Sweetwater. That's because you don't call them. You can absolutely get a deal at Sweetwater. Sweetwater is, uh, that's why they have, uh, sales, uh, sales engineers, sales reps, whatever they want to call them. Um, basically you call Sweetwater, you will get a deal. I say that. I've said this for months. I'll keep saying this again. Even though I just told you, if you click a link to Sweetwater, I get something out of the deal. I'm telling you guys, because you're my community here. I'm part, I consider myself part of the community. I consider you guys part of this community. Uh, call them and get a deal. If you awkward, like, you know, you know, you don't, you don't handle phone negotiations very well. Don't super, or what do you call it? Chat it. You know, you just click the chat button and just chat them. Send them, you know, if you've bought a pick at Sweetwater, there is somebody assigned to you. <laughs> Okay. We all know that. They they call you. I ask him not to call me. He emails me after the purchase. He sends the email now and just says, hey, is everything okay? Um, if you have that email, that's what I do. I'll just email him. I think my guy's Brent. I feel bad if it's Brett, but I think it's Brent. Um, and again, no disrespect. I'm, you know, uh, but I just email him and I, and this is what I say. I'll say, hey, I was thinking about buying a Friedman mini head. Could, is there any deals or anything you can do for me? And sometimes he's like, yeah, I can give you 10% off. And sometimes he's like, yeah, there's no deals right now. And as soon as he says, no, no, that no is just the opportunity to go a different angle. I'll go, I'll go search on the internet and I'll find it somewhere else for less money. And then I'll email him back and say, okay, I found it for this price. Can you match that? But so, you know, I don't think I've done that, but once every time I say, is there any sales or deals or anything coming up or anything you can do for me? He's always offered something. And sometimes the deal is crazy. Like it's 20% off. And sometimes it was normal, like 2% off. So, and that has nothing to do with me, YouTube channel. Like I said, I don't even think he knew I had a YouTube channel up until at some point I bought something and I did a video with it. And then it, he found out that way. So, yeah, uh, Guitar1952 says, I got 15% off a PRS calling a sales engineer. Yeah, you call them. That's, it. That's how it works. They're a business like any other business. Uh, and so, you know, so we don't, so we don't uh, you know, alienate the important businesses for us, the small businesses. These small businesses, small music stores will do the same thing. You, you talk to people. You'll never get a deal as good as when you talk to somebody. So that's the beautiful part about the human connection. 
All right. I know we went on that a little long. Um, <laughs> and uh, But I think it's been a subject that a lot of us are concerned with. We'll have to do what we did with uh, when the guitar, bankruptcy, uh, guitar Center bankruptcy happened, and we talked about that, and the prediction was pretty right on about that with basically saying that they wouldn't go anywhere, and they didn't. And the, the, the Etsy buyout at Reverb, this is just another kind of buyout thing. And I know this one, I think, is the most nervous one because of what I said. I, obviously, a lot of you like Sweetwater because, like I said, I see how you guys purchase. And um, you, we don't want that to change. I hope it doesn't change. It, 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 it would be really dumb because, like I said, their, their growth and power has been crazy. And uh, like I said, I, you know... <laughs> I, it's not for me not trying. Like I said, you guys have seen it. I love Sam Ash. Love them as a store. Uh, I think they're cool dudes. I've had great experiences. I've done videos. I've never had a paid deal with uh, Sam Ash. So you know, so Sam Ash never paid me a dollar. They they've never they've never given me a discount larger than they would just give any average Joe or Jane walking off the street. And um, I've gotten the millions of views. And I didn't ask for anything for that. All I did was kind of insinuate over and over again how it would be really cool if they would find out a way to take that energy of those videos and turn it into money because as I told them the problem with my platform which is the internet and their platform which is brick and mortar stores is is that when you guys see a video that I do about Sam Ash you get excited and you want to click and you want to buy because just like I do but there's nowhere to click and buy <laughs> their website's kind of not that great and you're not going to go down to the store because you have to be next to a store so <laughs> Wanna Beetle says Sam Ash never paid me either, and I work there. Okay, well, if that's if that's the case, you should call Sammy Ash. He's, uh, that's the one thing about Sam Ash I can tell you is anybody can get Sammy Ash on the phone, and he will take care of you. I've seen it. As I lose my voice, the Grumpy Guitar Mike says Grumpy Mike Guitar, my dyslexia apparently, says these things never work out for the customer. We don't know. I, actually, you know what? I, 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 I respectfully disagree in this idea. My gut feeling says the only people that should probably be nervous is the Sweetwater employees. Um, you know, that's usually who, who takes it a little bit. <laughs> that's who usually gets screwed a little bit. They are, you know, um, because the company starts, you know, kind of cutting benefits, cutting deals, you know what I mean? Cutting, uh, uh, um, like with me, they cut my affiliate back, which was done way before this program. Um, but they might cut back their commissions, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, companies as a whole, I understand we, look, we've seen it again, private equity firms mess up stuff all kinds of, all, all the time. However, um, it just depends. Remember, private equity firms want to make money. And if there's, there's money in, making getting more customers and sales they might focus on that they might we don't know like i said we don't know i i just don't know the answer i wish i did i would tell you <laughs> all right um sean says they probably just had a team meeting to stop giving uh people discounts phil told them to call yeah no you know what's funny is i like i like said the channel this channel i'm very proud to say as a podcast it's a large podcast i'm proud of the numbers uh and I'm blown away by the numbers that i uh that i get each week with you guys uh, wh whether it be streaming or or visually on youtube and of course as a channel but still it's still i'm t this is tiny you know, <laughs> you know what i mean you guys think you know like oh we did it but realistically it, it's you know we, we may not even get on most people's radars think about this i have 200 227 podcasts and uh and in those podcasts i uh, there's 33 million collective stream views of just the podcast this just a podcast since it started and it's 33 million streams and views i've probably we've we as a as a community have probably talked uh, horribly about Guitar Center about 10 to 20 times and echoed, by the way, everything I've ever said about Guitar Center Negative, you guys have echoed it with tons of force of views. I've never heard once from Guitar Center in a negative or positive way. <laughs> I don't even think they know this even is happening, that we're talking about them. 
The only thing I've seen is Guitar Center employees like to contact me, and and, and I, I appreciate it every time. They usually either give me some 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 information like, hey, that was really good, thank you, or hey, this is what I see, and then they kind of correct me, or they, they give me some additional information that helps me for the next time when I'm talking about it. But like I said, uh, um, I will tell you this, this, this uh, is a channel... When I so what I'm telling you is 33 million views. I don't know how many of that is Guitar Center view. You know, I'm talking about Guitar Center, but yeah, let's just say I hammered them a dozen times publicly to the tune of I don't know 10 million views. Probably I'm not exaggerating, and never heard from them. I mentioned Sweetwater Negative once, and Sweetwater contacted me. <laughs> I, Im immediately, um, once. I think that video had 23,000 views and Sweetwater was on it. And that's when Sweetwater, obviously I was uh, I was saying that Sweetwater was not actually conducting a 55-point uh, inspection and which at that time Sweetwater uh, talked to me and we were able to get them to publish the 55-point inspection, which was not, m not published before. So, so there you go. All right. Yeah, GC says, uh, uh, Brian says, GC could care less. It's not about us. It's about moving large quantities of gear for them. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, that's probably true. But like I said, there's, there's really, it's, I deal with this every day in this in, in this environment of the of YouTube arena. And, uh, and there's either companies that are just interested in this gr growth arena, you know what I mean, of YouTube, or... They just think it's just a bunch of nerds talking about a bunch of stuff that don't matter. And they're po both probably right. We'll see. Hey, Sweetwater's hiring. I would imagine they just built, they just opened that new store. And then, of course, um, uh, they also uh, opened a giant, like, huge warehouse, I think, last year as well to expand. Again, lots of expansion. So. Okay. We're going to go to the next subject. And like I said, what's great about this show too, and then we'll end on this note for this subject, is that we'll we'll talk about it. Like I said, if I hear anything, you know, especially if they send me any aggressive letters from this podcast, I'm just kidding, or anything like that, I'll update you guys. Like I said, I'll let you guys know what I know. And if you have any, and anything I talk about today, if you have questions about it, you can let me know and we'll keep going. We'll talk about those. Um, I like sharing what I do on YouTube. You got to understand, I, this is the old days of the old thinking of the world is gone. I, I'm a dude who literally got a, like a mic <laughs> and I just click a button on a computer to go live and we're here talking. Anybody can do this. I'm not saying anybody can get the numbers. It's tough to get these numbers. It's to, I can't, and I say, I know that because I can't get better. You know, I'm trying to get better numbers and it's hard for me to get better numbers. No matter where you are in this, it's hard. Every day is a grind and you're going to take it on the chin a lot, but anyone can do it because the, the uh, barrier to entry is, uh, well, you can do it with a phone. I know I did 100,000 subscribers with one phone. This is it. Well, this is my new phone, but, <laughs> but with my old phone. And so, I mean, you can do it. And so uh, the reason I share information like this is because you could do it too. It doesn't seem to, like I said, I think the internet's infinite, infinity. So I don't really worry about the competition. There's channels that have that have popped up, surpassed me by by tons of leaps and strides, and I'm I'm happy for them. Like I said, I'm just happy to exist on a platform most of the time. <laughs> okay. Oh, the pick uh, says, hey, Phil, are the podcast still on Apple? It hasn't updated uh, since August 8th. That would be my fault. I was, um, the pod clips idea is going over really well. However, what I didn't anticipate, well, one, I didn't anticipate the pod clips to do really well. I was thinking like I'd put them out there and I get like 2000 views and it'd be like something cool. The podcast clips are actually out outpacing the actual podcast, not by a lot, but by a little. But I didn't, I also thought the podcast clips would be easy. I thought I would just go on a podcast, clip a clip a piece out and then throw it on the internet. Like, like it was, you know, and it's not the case. I, in fact, I spent uh, yesterday, I probably spent four to five hours just watching my stupid face to talk about stuff as I try to find decent pod clips and then put them together. So um, th in that time suck, I did not get to uploading the last couple podcasts, the last two. I will get, that will definitely be done today and tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow morning. That will get fixed. Um, so Sean just said he watches both. I appreciate that. A lot of you guys said that. I, I'm, like I said, I stole the idea from Joe Rogan. It was uh, seemed like an easy idea. So... Uh, but we need to get some, some questions 
And the first one I want to get to is Greg. Greg says, hey, Phil. Oh, he, he's, Greg, I just did a, a yours was the question, was the Sweetwater question. Uh, Kendall from Bensonite Products says, hey, Phil, I couldn't think of a question. <laughs> but today, I just want to say thanks for all you do. Uh, I appreciate it. And thanks for all you do. If you guys don't know Benzonite products, I, I've I highlighted them many times on Reverb. Uh, he makes really cool bridge parts and all kinds of, uh, I say brass, but it's Benzonite, right? Isn't that the thing? <laughs> uh, but it's really cool. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael Nibber did a super chat again for no reason, man. I appreciate that. You know, um, it, it really makes the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's nice. It's a nice thing. I appreciate it. Um, the, uh... oh, okay, Andy says, uh, you previously mentioned liking short scale basses. What specifically do you like most about them? Uh, great content as always. Sure, I, I, I subscribe to the BB King, I guess maybe it's BB King or Billy Gibbons, whoever said like when they were talking about playing sevens or eights, why are you working so hard? That's what it is. Uh, as a bass player, what I learned was uh, that for me, especially 32 inch scales, but 30 inch scale, short scale basses, what I learned was even though I'm a big guy, I'm six foot, I could uh, uh, take a bass on stage, plug it in, adjust the EQing a little bit. No one could tell, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, in fact, I play my Warwick 32 inch scale all the time. No one can even tell that it's short scale. In fact, half the time, if I don't tell anyone, especially you guys, no one would know. And it's easier to play. So it's really, that's all it is. It's just easier to play. Uh, it makes it easy for me, especially me. I, I don't, I'm not a part of a band uh, like most bass players, um, and drummers, uh, that aren't in bands. There's just always an opportunity to play with somebody. And so I'll take it. I'll take any opportunity to play with anybody because <laughs> that's how I get my, that out of my system. Right. Some will say, Hey, we're playing two songs. Uh, you know, and, uh, and so I'm always learning a song on the fly. You know what I mean? When I played with, uh, Robert Baker and, uh, Phil X, uh, that night, it was literally Robert Baker was walking by me and he goes, you play bass, right? And I said, yeah. And I think I was holding here. Let me reenact it. It's me drinking a beer. Robert Baker's like, you play bass? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, Hey, you want to play this song? And I go, what is it? And he told me, and I go, how do you play it? <laughs> And then he showed me, and then I was like, okay, I got the concept. Um, and we practiced it, I, my, me on my bass and him on his guitar on sitting at a bar table uh, while Felix and the band played some other song. And then we learned it, and I went on stage and played it. So that's generally what happens for me. So I'm all about making my life super easy. In fact, ironically, here, I'll show you this. This is my bass amp. Uh, although I'm, I'm thinking about getting the Aguilar one too. Um, this is a preamp. So... Um, that's it. Like I'll take this in a base and I'll go gig anywhere anybody wants. I just DI that into the into the um, the PA system and I'm your bass player and I promise to mess up very little. <laughs> so that's what it is. It's just ease. Make my life easier because, like I said, um, usually if I get a week to learn some songs, that's usually a, like a really cool. <laughs> It's really cool. I'm really lucky. Um, Zelko, and it's that, so you know, that's not as bad when they're covers because covers pretty easy, but a lot of times it's like somebody's original material and you're just like, you know what I mean? You have to first, you have to listen to it. So for me, I'm just, since we're going down this road, what I do, my system is first, I don't even try to learn their songs. What I'll do is uh, let's say a band like, uh, like Larry Mitchell, when he asked me to jam, uh, jam with him or play with him, uh, his songs, um, I, downloaded the songs onto my phone and I listened to them all day, every day for like two days straight. Just those songs, nothing else, just over and over again, just to hear the changes, the things. I just like to feel that stuff out. And then um, I started learning them and because this stuff is pretty, not intricate. It was just a little more intricate than I, you know, the usually one, four, five kind of basic stuff. Um, I actually knew a friend who, who teaches, who knows Larry and had, had him work, help me work past some parts. And then, but we did all that in about a week and a half. And then I did the, the gig. And, uh, and if anyone is here <laughs> that was at that show, they remember the funny part of that show, which was at the sound check of that show, right during the sound check, I think Larry said, Hey, I'm changing something. And he gave me the run through on it. And then my face was like, <laughs> okay. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, this is a true story. I said, he was a rock. He did a change. He showed me a change and I said, okay, I got it. And then he showed me another song and he showed me a change. And I told him, cause uh, you know, again, I, I kind of pride myself on the honesty aspect. I said, yeah, there's no way. Like I said, look, one change. I got it. That's my brain can handle that. I'll remember that when we get to that song. Don't do this, do that. Gotcha. 
another song to remember another change, I'll forget it. I said, so I said, look, uh, it's in the key of A, I think. And I said, well, this is what I'll do. And he's like, and, and he's like, that's, that's not right. And I said, no, I'll smile when I do it. And, and there I will be okay. <laughs> and his face like, okay, it was crazy. And people were here because they were at the sound check. So there's, like I said, a few of you are there. And you guys know the story. And so when you watch that video, because they're on my other channel, I think the live, uh, uh, some of the songs we did with Larry, I did with Larry. Uh, there's a point in the song, you see it. All of a sudden I'm like digging in and I'm just, and that's me messing up on purpose because I, I'm, you can't really hear it, what's wrong. But if you look, his face goes, like, he's just like, Cause, and there I am smiling and I was right. No one really even cared. They saw me smile because I said, I told him, I said, you're the talent. They just got to look at, they're just listening and looking at you. I'm there. That's it. I'm just the side stuff. <laughs> so there's, uh, there's that. So all that is why I play a shorter scale bass. Um, Zel Zelko, I think Zelko, uh, uh, says, Hey Phil, I have a Rickenbacker four. 4003. Is it 4003? 4003. What do we call it? Co He's like a copy, though. It doesn't matter. He says he loves it except for the pickups. Your thoughts about putting a Model J uh, bridge? I have read that Seymour Duncan replacement pickups are bad. I don't know if they're bad. I like Seymour Duncan pickups. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of their bass pickups. The quarter pounders are cool. Um, but uh, my guess is... Um, Anything's going to be an upgrade. If you're saying you have a Rickenbacker copy, so I'm just assuming it's kind of a lower price copy. They're probably, again, like we talked about, they kind of skimp on the pickups a little bit. You get some better pickups, you'll be better off. Um, the other thing you can think about is getting a better preamp or bass amp if you're not using one of those. Because remember, a lot of the bass is going to come from there. You know what I mean? <laughs> not the bass frequency, but the guitar. So I would... Uh, I I'm just not super familiar with the model you're talking about. It's a Rickenbacker copy, so I'm not sure how how close of a copy to the pickups they're using or different pickups. But if it, if it helps, um, eat for bass, I still use Bartolini a lot. So if Bartolini has an option, I recommend that. I don't know what it is about those pickups. That's what my ear goes to. So I'm kind of a broken record. Bass is why I don't have a bass channel. Like guitars, there's infinite possibilities of suggestions I can give you. For bass, I tend to go to this, the exact thing I use, which is I only own three basses. They pretty much all have the same pickups. Well, two of them have the same pickups. <laughs> I run through the same stuff. Um, it's very utilitarian for me. It's just this is the sound I have, and this is what I want to do, and this is how I function through it. Um, and that's why I love playing bass, but that's, not why, but that's also why I don't enjoy collecting bass. I never got into that part of the bass thing, which is the different, you know, to me, I want a tone, not every bass tone. Like guitar, I want every guitar tone <laughs> for no reason. Uh, Lit Bay uh, just sent me a picture of a dude with his sunglasses, <laughs> and he's bald like me. <laughs> Thank you, Lit Bay. Oh, I would love to know. If you get a chance, uh, send me an email. Let me know how the strings worked out for your daughter and if you got them. My wife said you did get them, I think. But uh, overseas has been, like I said, overseas shipping has been a nightmare. Um for us, but my wife spent hours on the phone with uh, European, I don't know, postal service or something, and figured out the problem, which isn't us, but at least we know what's causing the problem. Um, that, or at least we know why there's a problem out there. So hopefully it'll help us in the future. All right, Ian. Ian says, what does Ian say? Ian says, I'm in the market for the fir my first Gibson. Can't decide between a Les Paul Studio 90s with ebony fretboard or a Les Paul Studio uh, Futera. Is that Futera? Well, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that model is. Uh, Futera. Futera? It's a Futata. Um, I, I like used. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I like I like uh, studio. Look, every Les Paul I've ever regretted getting rid of was a, a studio. I have made I, I've 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 made the studio mistake. There are there are so many guitar players watching right now that know what I'm talking about. If there was ever a thing that happens, there is something weird. It only happens in the Gibson world, in my opinion. Is we all buy studios, love them. I mean, love them. They're just the best sounding, best playing. They feel great. The neck carve is awesome. The weight is great. And then 
gear math kicks in, which is if we love this, just the standard will be so much better. And then we all get a standard or a custom and then literally spend forever trying to get back to the days of the studio. Here's my thing. It's a plead. I would never do this to any other thing. I will do it right now. I'm pleading with you. I'm pleading with all of you. If you have a USA made, an Epiphone maybe too, but USA made Gibson Studio that you like or love, do not get rid of it to get a more expensive Gibson. You will be sorry. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you will be sorry. <laughs> now, there's probably one or two you're going to go, oh, no, I did it and I love it. Good. I'm happy for you. But I'm telling you, for your comment, there are 10 other comments that are like mine. Like, why did I do that? The best Gibson I ever had, I had a white... My buddy Jeff, or not Jeff, my buddy Joe, who's been on the channel a long time ago, who sold me my uh, gym, floral gym, he sold me this white studio Les Paul that had gold hardware. And I think I paid 700 bucks from it, 400, 600 bucks from him. Loved it. And literally got rid of it in the weirdest way you could get rid of something. I got rid of it out of the disgust of how much I liked it more than my standard. And I go, this doesn't make any sense. And then for some reason, because of, you know, you gotta have the nicer guitar. I'm like, I can't get rid of standard and just have a studio. Who wants to be that dude with the studio when you can have a standard and people apparently will be impressed with you? Uh, I don't know. Sometimes you just believe a lot of whore, happy horse shit. Anyways, um, the point is, I got rid of the studio and then I probably have to this day, I've not walked into a music store and seen studios and not picked them up trying to see if I could find that one again. And, uh, so that's my plea. Don't, don't do it. So to you, uh, I would get the nineties, uh, Ebony fretboard studio. You'll be happy <laughs> since I don't know what the other one is. Um, uh, and I'm sure some of you guys are going to chime in, please chime in for him. I, I don't keep up on everything all the time. I obviously try to is, is obviously, but uh, I, I can't. Uh, Rocket Rick just did a super chat for no reason. I appreciate that. I like the Rocket with the K. So Alex says, hey, Phil, would you lo would love if you made a video on how to non-destructively block a main Mexico Strat trim? Oh, I never use it. Um, are there dedicated products for this? Yep. Is it on makeshift? Um, sure. Uh, I could do a video on that. It's just super easy process. First of all, most time you don't block the, the trim on the strat. You just kind of tighten down the claw, the springs on the claw, and then therefore the bridge goes against the body. A lot of players, I've never understood this. It's something I've just seen time after time after time after time again. And I've been, I've done it because customers have asked me, but I've never done it to my own guitar, which is sometimes they block the tremolo on a strat behind the block. In other words, behind the, the tremolo block, we put a piece of wood behind that. So now it can't go, you can't go forward with it. <laughs> I, I don't know if that, why they do that. Maybe they saw somebody do it. Maybe there's a theory behind it, more sustain. Um, but blocking a, 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 a tremolo on a Strat is straightforward. I mean, you can get a tremolo, no, you can get, uh, you can put a piece of wood in there. Me personally, I just tighten the screws down a little bit. If you really want to get out of control, put all five springs in there, tighten it down, a little Steve Ray Vaughn action, and uh, you, and you tighten it down firm enough to where the bridge doesn't come, doesn't come up, <laughs> but also doesn't push into the paint and dent the paint, uh, which you have to extremely go crazy to do on a Fender. You can do it a lot easier on basswood body guitars, but on a Fender that has an alder body or an ash body, you should be fine. Grubby Mike Guitar says, for the tone jar and why not? I'm going to try, try to say it like the way he says it. I got to watch it. How do you say it? I watch your show. I don't even, you know, what's funny about that. I watch your videos and don't even realize you're saying that in the videos. I assume it's tagline, but then for some reason, not connecting it to the actual show. Anyways, because I talked about FRs last week, I told you anything I index or type or because I talked about in FR, FR cabinets in my show last week, of course, YouTube had to show me FR, FR, Mike, Grumpy Guitar Mike's FR, FR video. And of course I watched it because you know, <laughs> he's got a good channel and I'm addicted to this stuff. And it was a good, good, uh, good, uh, good video, Mike. Um, anyways, the rest of his comments says, hope you're staying cool in the summer, Arizona heat. Cheers. Yeah. Well, I look my, I work from home for the most part. So my whole life is like now that the shop has air conditioning, it's air conditioned house to air conditioned shop, back to air conditioned house to the air conditioned gym. Uh, cause we go to the gym, uh, every day to uh, Monday. We'll, no, Sunday. Sunday will be 30 days straight going to the gym. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> 
Not not real gym. This is just a fat guy going to the gym, which means I go on the treadmill for like 50 minutes a day. Uh, and uh, I, 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 you know, that's it. Put on the headphones and just go. Uh, but it's nice to get out from, co- you know, from the COVID world again and get out to the gym. So, uh, again, to me in Arizona, it's like air conditioning, air conditioning, air conditioning. And then maybe I'll go into the pool. <laughs> Usually, they usually think. Um, uh, Chris Goad- Goadwin, Goodwin, I got Godin in my head. Chris Goodwin says, I had a minor issue with my Warwick, and Hans personally answered my email and extremely promptly. Uh, awesome service. Literally, Hans Peter Wolfner of, of, of Warwick will answer your, your call if you call him. Um, <laughs> I'm not kidding. So, you know, he's, uh, there's a few, a few owners like that. Uh, Dave Freeman, same thing. He answers all hundred percent. I believe hundred percent of all customer service calls or emails, especially emails for Friedman. Um, Hans Peter as well. Look, there's a reason why I've told you guys this very, very clearly. And again, that's, what's nice about having a weekly show where I can kind of explain the videos I, I do and why I do them and tell you the biases I have. Because like I said, I feel my, my videos are honest, but they are biased. There are all kinds of biases and I want you to know what they are. Lawrence Petros is a great guy. Luis and Alvaro, great guys from Pedal Pal FX. Robert Keeley, great guy. You know, uh, Hans Peter Wolfner, is like I said, cares about his customers. You know what I mean? Dave Friedman cares about his customers. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, John at Bad Cat, the owner of, of Bad Cat, phenomenal guy, you know, fantastic. Um, and, and again, I don't say that because they sent me some gear or something like that because companies send me gear all the time. <laughs> You know what I mean? That doesn't mean just because somebody sends you gear, you're like, oh, they're a great company. There's there's a reason why they send gear. I'll, I'll get them views and we'll get them marketing. And there's a reason uh, to, 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 you know what I mean? I know they get something out of the deal too. It, sometimes it's mutual and sometimes they're just, you know, it's an exploitation that could happen too. But there's a difference between that and then somebody coming back and like the guy, Chris, the guy who owns Holy Boards, I did his video. I did a Holy Board video. You know, he just out of nowhere, secretly to this day, he I don't think he knows I know but he's one of my patrons. Not before that video, after. He paid for the year. I think he paid five or ten dollars for the year. He paid for the year. So I think it was like a hundred and ten dollars uh, because you get a discount. So he just became a patron of my channel because he liked the video and he wanted to support me back. That's that's really cool because he already got the video. What does he care? You know what I mean? You guys, if you bought holy boards, already bought them. It was just, it's just, I'm sure he was like, he liked the video. He liked their conversation on the phone and he thought, I'm going to support that guy back and vice versa. So, uh, yeah. So I'm glad you had a great experience with Hans. Yes. If you have an issue with Warwick and Framus, if you call, you will get Hans on the phone and you will definitely get a response and email. And that guy does not sleep. I swear. The guy's in his sixties. He works all the time. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, literally never seen anything like it. <laughs> I, I, it's just nuts. And it's just nuts. Sometimes people just like the work and he's definitely, he's from a generation of workers. Like he just doesn't know how to do anything but work. He goes, he goes, he has a personal gym because uh, he has, you know, he's rich. So he's got a personal gym in his factory and uh, he goes in there every day and works out for lunch, but he answers phone calls and emails to customers when he's on the, on the, in the gym, on the treadmill and stuff. Absolutely true. Not me. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm on the treadmill and I'm, I'm just listening and watching the stupid clock countdown. Uh, I have no more mental capacity for that. Uh, the pick, like the tick, the pick says, do you dislike Sir guitars? No, absolutely not. Like I said, one of my favorite guitars and a dream type guitar is a Pete Thorne Sir guitar. Um, I, I, I bought a Sir Telly style, the T style guitar. It was okay. I think, you know, the reality was with Sir, and this is my issue with Sir. I only have one issue. They are freaking expensive. And so are PRSs, right? But there's something, I think few companies can, gr- can do what PRS does. You know, you know what I mean? The style of guitars they do. Like, obviously, like, Kiesel's got a copy of it. It's pretty good. And I like it. Quality-wise, there's certain things that just PRS does. Just like Gibson, there's certain things. People can copy them. They can get the quality right, but can they get the mojo right? There's mojo to every guitar. I don't believe, I personally don't believe when people are like, oh, you know, this guitar has no soul and this guitar has no mojo. It just doesn't speak to you. It speaks to somebody. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what I mean? Uh, to me, you know, a, a guitar, it has a personality, but the personalities have to match your personality, so to speak. And uh, for some reason, 
other than Pete's guitar, the Pete Thorne, not only Pete's guitar I played, his personal one, but I paid, I played a Pete Thorne guitar. For some reason, those that guitar spoke to me. And then I, it's expensive. It's, they're all expensive, but that one's just a little bit more expensive than let's say the, some of the Sir Moderns I was looking at. And I wasn't sure I was going to pay the premium for the Pete Thorne guitar. Um, and I ended up buying a Tele style guitar using the logic of, well, uh, you know, if I get a Tele style guitar, it'll, it'll be unique in my collection and I'll play it more. And the reality was, no, I, I didn't play it anymore. Um, but no, I like Sir guitars. I like their pedals. I think Sir's quality is fine. I don't agree with some of the Sir commentary that somehow they're somehow better than everything else. There are a few brands that get that. Let me look at it from your point of view. The, the, that's a joke, right? From a movie. Okay. So, uh, it was a Chevy Chase, right? <laughs> I think it was from Caddyshack. <laughs> Anyways. Um, the point is sometimes, you know, people, uh, players, especially they like their brands, but then they get this like hyper, um, uh, cult following ish, I, you know, and I'm probably guilty too. We're all fanboy over something, but Sir guitars, Gibson a little bit, PRS, of course. Um, you know, sometimes it just gets a little too much and I like Sir like I said, uh, don't be surprised if I ever get a, I don't get a Pete Thorne guitar. I, I just don't know to this day if I want the gold top one, the black one, or the red one. That's the one I thought about. I always wanted the blue one too, but I think I've kind of moved on. But I'll, I'll probably do it, um, and I'll be happy. But, uh, but like I said, they're very good. But I will stick with this. The reason, sir, is the reason, and this is no exaggeration, sir is the reason I like Kiesel. I did not appreciate Kiesel until I played Sirs. I watched a video once of a, of a guy on YouTube, not a YouTube channel, because, I mean, he was, but, you know, not like a professional like me. No, uh, you know what I mean? Like, he didn't have, like, do it weekly and stuff. And he was basically talking about Sir versus Kiesel. And he was saying the opposite of what I'm saying. He was like, oh, the Sir just blows this Kiesel away. And, and it's probably true. But what I couldn't get my head wrapped around was the Kiesel was like $1,600 and the Sir was 42 And all I kept thinking was, there's just no way. So when I bought a couple Kiesels, what I can tell you is, they if you want to tell me Sirs are better than Kiesels, any of you, that's fine. I don't disagree with you. But there's no way they're twice as good. There's no way. There's no way they're twice as good. Any, if saying that, you you actually will sound like a crazy person to me, <laughs> right? If you want to tell me a Sir is better than Kiesel, I will not argue. But if you're going to tell me it's twice as good or three times as good as a Kiesel, I just don't see it. I don't hear it and I don't feel it. If you like them more than that, that's another argument. We're talking about quality only aspect. So my problem is they are double and triple the price. And not because one's made overseas and one's made in the USA. They're literally both made in California. They're an hour. I don't even think it's an hour and 30 minute drive from Sir to Kiesel. So same, same California laws, same labor rates, same, same. And again, Sir's brand power, much stronger than Kiesel. I'll give you all the reasoning why a Sir can be the price it is. But I decided that I could get a guitar that's really good for half the money. So I went that way. But like I said, don't be surprised one day if I don't buy that Pete Thorne because, <laughs> you know, like I said, this isn't all about logic. You can't be just pragmatic about everything. Sometimes it's an emotional response. As I know I just contradicted what I said, all that whole speech, but I want, want you to know, you've got to look at both sides of this, right? There's no logical reason to own a Saldano. <laughs> that thing is the, the uh, and I'll tell you this guy's the story of the Saldano and why it's here when I do the video. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to do a review of the Saldano SLO 30 or if I'm going to do a comparison of this versus the, um, the, um, Engel, uh, Powerball. I don't know if I'm just going to AB them and call that the video, but either way, I'll explain everything. But that's a crazy, those two amps are like, essentially, this is the Sir and that's the Kiesel in this analogy. That's $1,300 to 27 Street price. Not what I paid, but street price. So, all right. Uh, what do we have? Thunder Falcon. Phil, your bat, Phil on Bad Cat 40R completely sold me on that amp. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> it's good for the Bad Cat guys. Uh, I actually talked to John this week. Cause, and he's a super nice guy. Absolutely. I've, I've, uh, bent that guy's ear for hours. He's, uh, he's amazing. He takes a lot of my, 
my crap. Uh, definitely my next purchase. Uh, fantastic amps. So, so you guys know, obviously it looks obnoxious with the bad cat stuff. This is the bad cat 112. They sent this to me and then they sent me the, uh, the player series, which is the, uh, PC board or wave solder board, whatever you want to call it. It's not hand wired American made 40 watt amp. And then they sent me the uh, hand wired amp. And the reason being was, um, I knew John, as you guys know, I knew him. He even sent me some boss pedals as a gift because he likes this podcast. So he might even be listening now that, which is like, it's weird when I have that weird connection. We don't know each other from like YouTube reviewing or anything like that. He just liked this podcast and he listened to it. And one day he heard it. I like boss pedals. So he sent me some and, uh, and then we just talked and then we hit it off. And then I decided I wanted to buy one of Zamps and I was trying to buy it and I was confused about which one to get. And I was about to make a decision. And I thought, why don't I text this guy? So I texted him. I text John. I said, which one should I get? And I said, you know, I figured he owns the place. He'll tell me, you know what I mean? Like if, he, and he said, uh, I'll send you both. Why don't I just send them to you? You can check them out and you tell me. And, um, so I checked them both out and I told him which one I liked the best. And it ironically is his, I'll tell you guys right now, I won't make you wait. Uh, Cause I'm going to do a comparison of the two videos. There's a lot of reasons why the hand wire is really cool. It's got a, it's got a, a, a tube rectifier versus a solid state rectifier in the uh, production model. I'll call this production and that's hand wired. Uh, and the production model has a, a two way switch versus a, a five way switch. So there's a lot of cool things going on in the hand wired one. I personally prefer the non hand wired one. That's the one I prefer. Although they, uh, they both are great. They both they uh, they both do what the bad cat thing does. And although I can appreciate the hand wired one, what I will tell you, and I'll tell you these guys in the video. I usually don't like stuff, but I don't know when this video is going to get out because uh, I still have a lot of editing on some other videos to do. Um, the main reason I came to that decision was what I realized is this: if you're a better player, the hand wired one will help you get all of that stuff you can do out. If you're not a better player, if you're like middle class hack guy like me or worse, the production model uh, doesn't highlight all your screw ups as much. It's not as hard to play through. So, um, so ironically, it, it works out great. Not only is the production model less expensive than the hand wired one, and they both still have the same output transformers. They're still built in California each. Uh, and of course the production is a lot cheaper. It's about $700 to $1,000 cheaper. Um, it's probably the better fit for most players. You got to be like Sean Tubbs or RJ Rinkilio. You got to be those guys like, you know, Jay Leonard J. Those guys, I would say if they asked me if they're, you know, because they're, they're, they're all cool guys and I've talked to them. If they said, hey, Phil, what you get? I'd be like hand wired. Don't even consider the production model. Every dude who can play as good as me or worse, we all get this. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be asked. That, that's just my opinion. Uh, Scott says, Princeton or Blues Jr. or Tweed Champ and why? I, I, dude, I hate this uh, doing this to you. It's going to be the Princeton because that's what I play. Think about this. That Princeton, uh, you know, there's a couple things you can say great about amps. Here's something I will say great about amps. I've been on YouTube. My first video on YouTube was like 2014 or 15. So it's been five, six years ago. Uh, I owned that amp then. <laughs> Think of all the stuff that's churned over five years. You know what I mean? Either because I reviewed it or I liked it or I got rid of it. There's very few things that just just will not I will not get rid of, and that's just one of them. Uh, so I'm a Princeton fan. I'm not saying that's the right choice, but I can't give you any other answer than that. When obviously uh, since then, all the other amps you mentioned have made an appearance on the channel in some form or another, and I like them all. But the Princeton's where I landed. Uh. I have no idea how you say this. I'm going to say light, lighten, light, lighten. I hope I'm not jacking up your name, man. Uh, it says, have you had a chance to see six string samurai? No. You know, what's funny is I forgot we talked about that. Let me copy paste. You know, I remember us talking about this. I remember having it all ready to watch. And then I don't know, COVID. <laughs> Isn't that a thing you can do now? Oh, it's because of COVID. I didn't watch it. Here, just so you know, I didn't watch it because of COVID. Even though during COVID, I probably binge watched more TV than I've ever in my life to the point where I just can't watch anything anymore. Uh, unless it's on YouTube, because at least it's shorter and keeps my attention. Uh, Bradley says, starting started giving my nephew guitar lessons through video chat since I'm a truck driver. Uh, he isn't picking up the basic stuff, strum patterns, 
uh, or, or reading tabs. I make videos to send him been three months tips. Sure. Well, obviously, then he, it's not not working for him in this concept, and that's and that's okay. Um, that you know, you didn't say how old he is. Believe it or not, the age matters to how they learn. It just does. Um, because of their problem solving skills. As you get older, your problem solving skills get honed in, which means when you teach a younger, younger student, you got to present it in smaller pieces. Just like, think about, just like how, think about this. You learn music the same way you're going to learn language, right? <laughs> right. You're in class. They go, you know, spelling, they're gonna, small words at first, <laughs> then bigger words, right? Same thing with music. It's got to be basic. Um, there's a reason why every kid, ever that learned a musical instrument, you know, I'm giving a scenario that's not exact because, but learns Mary Had a Little Lamb or Happy Birthday on like one string, you're right, or one finger on the piano. Again, very basic. Um, and sometimes you're like, I am giving him basic, but like you said, he isn't picking up basic stuff like strum patterns. Look, strum patterns um, are not easy. They're not. There's a reason why most of us can't dance. Rhythm is not inherently something that was given to most of us as a skill set, right? It's just not that thing that we all have, like everyone, right? Uh, in fact, I would I would argue that more people probably can sing, which, as you know, most people can't and think they can. Uh, more people can sing than dance. And... Uh, <laughs> so same thing uh rhythm is a tough thing so i don't know if i would uh do strumming patterns like i said don't worry about that go basic man one string notes note for note the reason is is this when you're teaching children they they have to see success to move forward it has to happen it, adults aren't much different but at least adults have the hindsight to know that how something ends. You know what I mean? Uh, I do this like every day and nothing's happening, but it will because my life has shown me over and over again that process makes sense, right? Um, do this every day and at some result, you know, it's improved, right? Go to the gym every day, you know, uh, you know, play guitar every day, whatever you do, right? You, at some point, you get to the destination if you don't quit. Children really don't have that. They don't have hindsight. So to them, they have to Mary Had a Little Lamb. Then they play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now they can play a song. Now they understand that they can play a song and you can move them forward to the next thing. So um, there's a reason why I like How Learned Book One, which is not my favorite book by far, is the most used book probably by guitar teachers ever because it is freaking slow and lame. And I hate to say it, if you don't have a better book or program, that's the book you have to use. I think there's a thousand better ways in that book. Uh, and somewhere there's some guitar teachers watching now, right? They're pissed, but there's some guitar teachers that are nodding at me, but, um, you, you, you got to break it down that way. So strum patterns, I don't think over about that reading tabs, same thing, right? Reading tabs, um, maybe not worry about that again. I don't know the age. So he could be like 17, <laughs> <laughs> then I'll be like, oh. but just because he's older doesn't mean you have to change some of that theory. Maybe not Mary Had a Little Lamb, but one string. You know what I mean? Keep it that way. Keep it simple. Break it down easier and easier. Don't go. Don't be afraid. Get, make it so easy. Sometimes I think the fear is your fear. Most people's fear are uh, the same, which is that they'll become disinterested. If I make it too slow and too dumb and too boring and too lame, they won't dig it. That's not true. That's, I've not found that to be true. It's why corny people are, are you get, you kind of like when you see somebody corny, hey, like me on the internet and you go, oh, that guy's so lame. And then you're like, who watches him? But that, meanwhile, you're chuckling or you're watching. It's because really deep down, ultimately everybody, that, we, we mock that stuff, we make fun of it, but it really does work. And so like I said, I would dumb it down even more and go slower. And uh, don't be afraid to do that. And then do, also don't be afraid to switch up tactics. So if that doesn't work, try something else. So, And if he's 30, <laughs> if he's 30, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Probably, I would put him on Guitar Pro or one of those video games. <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding. Uh, Chiku, I'm going to say Chiku. Chiku says, hey, Phil, do you have any experience with basses from Sandberg? I don't. Uh, I don't think I've ever worked on or played or seen a Sandberg other than just a picture and stuff like that. So no unfortunate information there. Um, 
But uh, you never know. You know what I mean? That's the great thing about having this. And when we talk about stuff, something comes up. Now it's in my brain. Maybe I'll meet them one day. Maybe we'll come across it. And that opportunity will be, uh, without you mentioning it, would have never happened. So sometimes, even though it's I don't have a great answer, at least we can, we might have one one day. Emil says, hey, Phil, sent you a super chat a couple weeks ago to thank you for taking so many non-super chats. And I think you might have missed it. I did. A couple weeks ago. So, you know, YouTube... Um, for some reason, there was a glitch on YouTube. It was during one of my episodes. It happened to Tone Talk, too, which is with Dave Freeman and Mark Kazansky. BB Ninja reached out and said, hey, what did you do? Because he, he noticed I was grabbing some that you you know you normally can't even see if you don't wait. What happens with Super Chats is they pop up. If you don't answer them, they kind of fade away, if you guys notice. you know, uh, Especially when you have... I'm not on the right screen, so I can't see how many of us are here. Uh, there's 900. And 62. <laughs> I had to take a drink. I'm sorry. Um, uh, of us. And so the screen starts moving. You miss that stuff. So we have a screen here on YouTube. Uh, every channel does. That uh, it's in your monetization screen. So if you're any of you are curious about it, if you ever have any channels like this, in your monetization tab on your in your uh your studio you click on there and then it's got says the word called supers. You click that, it's a drop down, it's every super chat that you ever got. Like, I think since the history of your channel. Uh, either way, it's a long... Well, not really. I think YouTube only goes back two to three years now. So it'll have the last two to three years of your Super Chats. So that's where I am right now. Right now, you guys are probably looking at you guys talking. I don't even see what you guys are talking about right now. Most time, I'm in this Super Chat screen. When I say I go back to the other screen, it's when I'm going back to you guys chatting. Um, so I'm actually am toggling, like I said, between the Super Chats and the regular screen. So... Um, and the reason I say that to you guys when I go, oh, I'm back in the other screen now, regular screen, just to let you know that if you are commenting, I am seeing it. Right now, whatever you're commenting, I don't see because I've learned <clears throat> that when uh, you use your audience as your guest, which is what my channel is uh, predicated on, this idea that you're, I'm interviewing you, talking about your subjects, your questions, that if I'm answering your question and reading what you guys are saying, I get very distracted very quickly. So... Um, so to answer your comment about the super chat being lost, yes, it's back. I can search back through them now. I apologize for whatever happened to, to anyone in their super chats, but like I said, it wasn't it wasn't my malice. I'll find them eventually. Um, but it was because uh, there was a glitch, and it it happened for almost over a week, and then it came back. All right, we have Todd. Todd Tech says, why aren't compensated nuts like Irvana more popular? I love them. I love them. <coughs> Excuse me. Close as possible to perfect intonation. The Irvana nut is a good nut. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, basically, if you've seen a Music Man, they'll put them on Music Man's. Um, Ir Ir Irvana came out around or after the Buzz Feetin or Fetin system did. And the idea was instead of training a technician to, which is what Buzz, Buzz Feetin did, he was training people. You would have to go to his classes and be certified. And they had like one, two, and three level. And learn to cut the nut the way he tells you for perfect intonation. And, uh, and then Nirvana came out and they were like, hey, we'll just prefab the nut, so to speak. Different, different, but same. Um, very cool idea. Why Why are they not more popular? Um, <coughs> because, I'm apologizing guys that my throat's drying out, but um, my, my thought process on this is, in my experience, is why stuff like that's not more popular with more guitars in manufacturers is like I said, doesn't matter the price point on a guitar, manufacturers throw money at things that they think you value. So for instance, uh, Schechter was like, to me, the first company to really kind of epitomize that logic of, okay, we're gonna make a guitar in Korea and we're gonna put Seymour Dungans in it, hip shot, or not hip shot, uh, you know, Tone Pro's bridge, Grover tuning keys, you know what I mean? We're gonna put inlays, we're gonna put a, you know, it's veneer, but we're gonna put a maple cap on it. Um, and uh, those are all the things that people value, right? So they're like, wow, look at all these things. Uh, but if you notice, a lot of times they had graph tech nuts, but a lot of times they had plastic nuts too, because again, it depends on the buying public of what they focus on. Sometimes they focus on the tuning keys. So the manufacturer's like, okay, if we put better tuning keys, that's what the customer's looking at. Like I said, you guys will tend to look at certain things. Why I tell you guys all the time when somebody says, oh man, can you believe how nice cheap guitars are? That's why you take them apart in videos because I know they know how to make cheap stuff look good. That's the first thing. Look, China, Indonesia, uh, Korea, uh, Japan, 
right? All those manufacturing facilities, the first thing they all learn is how to duplicate the way something looks. They can get the look down way before they get the quality down, uh, which is why we've all been duped by something. It doesn't even have to be in the guitar world, right? It could be a stereo system. It could be anything. Th those manufacturers learn the way to get something the way it looks down before. And I've used this analogy before. It's like when we used to have home, you know, stereo uh, boom boxes, right? Whatever you want to call them, ghetto blasters, boom boxes. When you got some of the cheaper ones, they'd always have those base ports and you look in the hole and it wasn't a, it wasn't a port. It was just like a plastic tube that sealed off because they knew aesthetically, you know, you knew you saw a speaker, you saw a tweeter, and then you saw a hole and that's for the port. And and so they knew how to get that look of the speaker down. And even though the, you'd look in the speaker and those things weren't in there correctly. Or better yet, did you remember this? They would do this. This is a big thing in the stereo industry too. They would put speakers on a on an insert into the into the speaker itself. I should say the actual speaker into the box. And they put a shroud around it. So when you look at it, it looked like it had a 10 inch speaker, but it was really an eight inch speaker with like this two inch plastic shroud around it to make the speaker look like it's bigger behind the grill because the grill is dark. So again, uh, going to that effect, uh, most companies, back to your Irvana, most companies are gonna focus on aesthetics or again, making something look right. And that's truly improving intonation, but not every customer is gonna know that. Uh, right now, there are a ton of viewers that are going to watch this uh, and go, I don't know what you're talking about. You have to Google Irvana <laughs> to look it up. Um, like I said, I would either do that, but I would look at it. Music Man does them on their American series guitars, and they're fantastic. Um, <clears throat> so that's why they don't use it more, because it's an expense. And even though you're going to look at it like, well, it's only like 10 bucks, But to them, do you want to spend a dollar? You want to spend $10 for something that may not influence the sale? I'm not saying it's right. I'm just explaining the logic. Okay, uh, Frederick says, what's your opinion on the new Jag Stang uh, from Fender's putting out? Um, other than I saw it, I saw that they made the arrangement with the uh, with uh, Kirk, Kirk Cobain's uh, estate. I think it's a cool idea. Kirk Cobain, <clears throat> I appreciate him now. He was not something I appreciated then when he came out. You got to understand, he came out, I was in high school when he came out. Um, and it was cool. And it had nothing to do with grunge, you know, the 80s grunge, hair metal grunge thing. Like I said, it was cool. But at that time, I think I've said this before, Alice in Chains were just so huge to me that Nirvana just didn't, you know, I mean, I love Soundgarden. I loved uh, Alice in Chains, like those two bands way more than, let's say, Pearl Jam Nirvana. So so it wasn't like, oh, it's like, oh, hair metal's better than grunge or I hated grunge. Uh, it's just those, you know, Alice in Chains really, really spoke to me as a band. Um, so that's my way of saying I have no intention of checking out the Jag stain unless, you know, one was to get sent to the channel. I'll, of course, I'll review, do anything <clears throat> that gets sent out because it makes sense to make the content, but to buy it, unless, of course, the patrons are pushing it for some reason. I don't have any reason to do it. Uh, Music Therapy Laz says, uh, after finally seeing Slash play live the other night, must get a gold Tom Les Paul if you were me. Which one would you get? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've seen Slash and Miles Kennedy now three times. I'm a huge Slash fan, of course. And he, he's the sole reason why I own a Les Paul. Everybody's got their Les Paul. If you're into Les Pauls, everybody's got their Les Paul player that they kind of did that, whether it's, you know, Paige or Frampton or whoever. Um, yeah, Slash for me. Um, gold Top Les Paul. I mean, you know, really at this point, unless you get a used one, the only ones you can get are the 50s ones, I think, the 50s reissue ones. If you want to go Gibson. So I don't know what to tell you. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, gold tops are, are a funny thing. They're, sometimes you can find tons of them. Sometimes you can't find them at all. Uh, I love gold tops, and I'm constantly trying to find the perfect one, and I've never yet done it. So that's like that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, or don't forget Epiphones, man. I actually probably better you know, have better luck finding a good gold top Epiphone than a Gibson, in my opinion. Voodoo Fist says, "Hey Phil, I pre-ordered the Pedal Pal 800 V3 this week, but after I did after I did, I realized it was the 2020 version, not the 21 version. Is it basically the same?" Um, so you pre-ordered the V3 this week after you realized it was the 2020 version, not the 2020. I don't know. I didn't even know there's a difference. 
So, you know, I don't even know which one I have. I don't know. <laughs> um, what I do know is, is that uh, I got a, uh, a text from Luis at Pedal Pal today who told me that they just did another limited uh, pre-order run. Uh, you know what I mean? Because he, like I said, he doesn't want to take orders unless he knows he has the parts and everything to make them and get them out there because he doesn't want you guys waiting. And uh, he said it sold out in minutes because that video, that video is unpredictable. Videos are unpredictable, like I said. I can do a video and it gets, uh, you know, like I, th I just did a, a, a Sharp My Axe this week and that video takes like three full days. <laughs> that one took about two and a half, but two and a half days and it got like 19,000 views, which is great. But I did the pedal pound, it's got like 73,000 views. And that video took like a day. Um, so it's never, I never know what's going to connect, right? You try different titles, thumbnails, sometimes they're clickbaity, sometimes they're not. doesn't matter. Sometimes just things take off when they do. That video took off. And that's great. I'm happy for Luis and Alvaro because, uh, you know, it's just dumb luck that it just a video does well. And it did well. And the only thing is, is they're a small pedal company. And that video is is a is a blessing i'm sure but i could also i can hear it in the tone of their text when they're texting me this this it's just a lot of you know like a lot of people want them I'm, i bet you they probably have about five in my opinion you have probably about 500 people who want a pedal that can't get one right now that's a lot well to put this in perspective that's uh, that's insane that's like insane numbers for them to have that many people wanting a pedal that, that they um but I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm gonna, because remember I was talking about earlier about good people and when you find good people, <clears throat> <clears throat> they sent me a nice text thanking me for the video. They let me know that you guys went crazy and bought all the pedals. They let me know that you guys bought all the pre-orders. They let me know you, they did. They finished that and did another pre-order list and you buy them up in minutes. They also let me know that two very famous rock star guitar players, I won't tell you who, because it's too braggy, <laughs> contacted them wanting a pedal from that video. <clears throat> and then they told me that they told them that after they fulfill your orders, they'll definitely send them one, basically, or get them one. But they wanted to assure me that they are not going to give out any pedals to any rock stars until they get your orders done. That's why I'm telling you, I'm sure he doesn't want me talking about that, but I think it's important to talk about. So I'm telling you. And I'll deal with Luis later. Luis, if you were watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I love you. Pablo says, happy Friday. Would you say with the wiring on the Charvel Pro DK24 humbucker humbucker, in your opinion, is it is it serviceable as a Strat-like sound? I think at the core of your question, you want to know if the the, the Charvel Pro DK24 that I have, the humbucker humbucker, can I get a straight uh, Strat sound out of it? Absolutely. The guitar is, by nature, those guitars just have Strat vibes to them, even with the humbuckers. Yes, you'll get a very Stratty sound. In fact, I would dare say uh, you'll get a heavy Strat sound out of the guitar, but you'll never get anything more than that. I love that guitar, but that's what they do. Those are like kind of super Strats where they have that Strat sound, and then they have that full kind of ballsy Strat sound, but they don't ever have like a Les Paul sound or a, a bigger, bigger sounding guitar sound. Aaron Brown did a super chat and then we have Anthony. And by the way, the last super chat is from Chad. Uh, so, and then I'll, I'll try to finish up with some, some non super chat stuff because huh? the super chats got, we went long in the beginning and they got stacked up. I apologize. <clears throat> and I apologize for clearing my throat, but it's been a long day. <laughs> okay. So, um, the, um, Anthony says for the tone jar, quick, odd question. What clothes do you recommend for Oh, cloths. What cloths do you recommend for cleaning guitars without damaging the finish? I I just use uh, the uh, the um, Costco microfiber cloths. I've had no issues with them, um, uh, mostly because uh, you know they were cheap. I mean, they they may not be cheap to you guys, but for me in a shop situation where I'm dealing with customers, uh, having access to clean cloths all the time. It's it's really good stuff. Uh, someone told me to use Scott's blue paper towels since they are disposable and don't uh, grip dirt. Thoughts? That was when Nathan was on the show. Somebody asked him about those, and he said uh, they, they he doesn't recommend them. Uh, and you know that that guy works on finishes all day. So again, I'm not disparaging anybody's comment because I've never used them. It never occurred to me to use those. Um, I'll use. Here's the rules I follow. I will use 100% uh, cotton. 100% flannel or microfiber on guitars. 
That's what I use. Never done me wrong as long as I stick with those rules and they've been fine. Microfiber cloths work good. But I, like I said, I also have 100% uh, cotton uh, towels that I use on the guitars and they're fine too. But um, I know that you can buy tons of guitar cloths that are flannel, 100% flannel. And um, those seem to work just as well. So um, Chad says, thoughts on the old Gibson RD guitars? They're crazy looking, right? That's like a crazy looking guitar. <clears throat> That's a guitar that I could say, if you would ask me this question five years ago, I would have told you like, it's not my thing. But now, you know, I've been in a mood for something crazy. I just want a guitar that's a little different and crazy. Um, I don't know if the RD would be that guitar for me, but yeah, like I, you know, like a Firebird or an RD, something like that, some kind of crazy guitar. I, I just want something different. So that's my thought on them. Very cool. Um, I like the Dirty Fingers pickups. A lot of times they have those. Very cool guitars. I've worked on a couple for customers. Um, even sold one. We had one come and trade once, and I remember playing it, liking it before it was gone. Uh, Chad says, is it feasible to swap a plastic nut with a Floyd uh, Rose nut? Seems to me the metal nut would hold tune better even without locking it. Sure, you can swap it, but you're going to have to route out that spot for the Floyd Rose nut. I mean, you know, you're going to have to fit it on there. It's not a, a uh, my guess is if you have a plastic nut, it's not even close to the thickness of the Floyd Rose nut. So um, you have another option, though. You can put a brass nut in there if you want that. I like brass uh, for, for the nut on a guitar. I think it's a fantastic material. Um, I have quite a few guitars, whether you realize or not, that have brass nut on there. And if you watched me when I did two, my last uh, uh, guitar build uh, where I did the Galeri, where I modded it up, I put brass on there. And then another guitar before that, I put brass on there. I'll use brass a lot. I like it. I'll just buy a, a brass blank and then cut it. And in that video I show you, I just cut it like a normal nut, like any other material. Okay, now, oh, and I have a new thing. Hold on a second. Cool. So I have a new feature, uh, whether you guys realize it. When I say no more Super Chats, I just took them away. So now I can take them away and give them back. So I always had that feature, apparently. I just didn't know where to look. So now I don't have to worry about it. Let me spend some time uh, going over the, the comments and stuff and the questions you guys have. Uh, you know what I mean? Because like I said, I try to do... Uh, as many non-super chats as possible as well. Um, Dave Ben says, the, that SLO3 is my dream amp, but we'll never be able to afford one. You know, what's funny about this amp is I know what you guys think where it came from, but you're wrong. This actually is something else. Um, so I don't know. I didn't pre... I didn't ask. <laughs> Pre-ask? I didn't pre-ask. I didn't uh, get permission to talk about this. So a viewer who's also a pretty amazing dude and also owns a pretty amazing record company, uh, uh, his name's Joe, fantastic guy. And uh, you know what? He deserves the shout out for, for the record company. It's Rat Pack Records, if you guys don't know them. Fantastic record label. I mean, George Lynch, Lynch Mob's on it. Uh, the band Roxanne, check them out. That's uh, awesome. Um, they have uh, Michael Sweet from Striper. They have, I mean, the artist roster on it is great. I think Vixen's on it as well. Fantastic. A lot of the bands a lot of us love are on his record label. Um, and a lot of you buy records and CDs from him. And um, he's a, you know, he's a fan of the channel, which is good. And uh, long story short, he bought a Saldano after I did the interview with Mike Saldano. When I mentioned that I really wanted a Saldano, he said, you know, I'm not using it. I'd sell it to you. And uh, he also has a, a, um, Engel Fireball 25. Now, here's what's interesting about this, uh, situation. So in this situation, I, like you, uh, Dave, Dave Bentz said, it's a dream amp. Saldano, for some reason, is a dream amp for me too. It was like a, man, if I, like, I love my Freeman. Don't get me wrong. I love the Freeman. It's my, you know, fantastic. The Bad Cat, fantastic amp. You know, to be in a situation where I have a gig where I get to interact with these companies or, you know, own this gear, all this stuff is really cool. You know what I mean? But here's what's interesting. There, there's that, like a Bad Cat, discovering a Bad Cat and how cool it is, is a fun experience. But I didn't spend my whole life wanting a Bad Cat. Um, my Saldano story goes like this. I, I was a huge, I am a huge Queens Reich fan, huge George Lynch, uh, uh, Lynch mob fan, huge. Um, they were just bi big on me when I was, 
Uh, 17, I know this because I wasn't 18 yet. Um, when I was 17, I was in, I was just, I loved uh, Queensryche. I just thought they were, I thought Operation Minecrane was like the, the greatest. And I wanted to play a Saldano. So me and my buddy Pat, because we're crazy, we got in a car from Tucson, Arizona. My truck, actually. I had a pickup truck. We got in my pickup truck, which uh, luckily can make it there and back. <laughs> we got in my pickup truck, and we drove all the way to Hollywood to the Guitar Center to try a Saldano amp. And we walked in, and they had not just one. They had like five or six in a row. Purple, snakeskin, right, SLO 100s. And uh, we asked the guy, the, the employee, can we try it? And he's like, ah, oh, you know, they're really for buyers. And we gave him puppy dog eyes. And he's like, ah, oh, go ahead. <laughs> we plugged into him and we're like, oh, this is, you know, we're like, it's fizzy. It's distorted. It's a thing. I don't know. To me, it probably sounded like a crate and I probably didn't know any difference. But it was just an experience of like, oh, my goodness, this is the holy grail. You just didn't see those. And then we drove back. Like, literally, it's, as lame as it is to say that, I literally drove seven hours <laughs> to play a Saldano amp <laughs> that, I, that I had no possible in any concept in the world of affording. So like you, this has been like a dream come true amp. That being said, it's a really impressive amp, but I, I'm really happy uh, and I'm really um, glad that Joe provided this opportunity for us because he owns the Engel Fireball 25. And he said uh, in the in the uh, video in the podcast when somebody was asking me about the Soldano and or an amp, and I said, "Oh, my dream amp is like the Soldano, like you." And I said, well, "I have the Fireball Twenty Five. It's like the poor man's Soldano." He, having both, basically emailed me and said, "You know, you're right. I have both, and yeah, the Ingle is pretty close. It's like the poor man's Soldano." So he sent me the amp. I have the amp. I've AB the amp. Uh, I won't make you guys wait. I'll do the you know video too. But uh, in my opinion. Um, I think the Saldano's got some magic. It's just got the, the, the little bit of that moment. You know what I mean? You play Wicked Sensation on it. You play some stuff that's, that's Saldano like, and it's just fantastic. But I, I really stick with what I'm saying, which is I think the EVH amps and the Ingle amp, I think again, like when I was talking about Kiesel versus Sir, it's going to get you. 75%, not if not 80% of the way there, and in some ways better, in some ways not as good, but it's still very good. I could tell you this. If I could only keep one, I don't even know how to do that. How do I dual point? <laughs> I'm so glad people listen to podcasts. Look at this. I can't even physically point to these two amps and through using the camera. There, look. If I had a choice between the Saldano and the Ingle, I have no idea what I would do. I feel like I'm, this is like I'm rubbery. Uh, I'd keep the Ingle. <clears throat> I'd be the one. And it has nothing to do with price. Here's why. He sold me the Saldano for a crazy deal. He basically, I won't tell you, but let's just say uh, it was a crazy deal. He, uh, We did a cash, and I'm doing some repairs for him for some of his guitars. And long story short, it's a fraction of what it goes for new. Fraction. And uh, even with that, to that, I would still probably go uh, Ingle Fireball over the Saldano. But... And not because I think it's better. I just think, man, it does it does everything I like and and uh, very impressive. Plus, it's a good time to... Now, I will tease you. I have a video coming out Monday. I rarely do these videos. And now, so you know, on Monday, it could be just me. I doubt it. It's probably going to be 50 YouTube channels are all going to be talking about a new product that everybody's got to have. And I'm one of them, which you guys know, I kind of try to shy away from those mass marketing blitz. Like I said, I don't really see my channel as a marketing channel, right? I see it as a, you know, a gear channel, not so much an advertising channel, um, even though those are kind of in the same vein. Um, that being said, I've been talking about this stuff since January. Here's a kind of a hint. <laughs> I'm like, about everybody listening to the podcast, like what? Here's a hint. I'm pointing at something right now. And it's kind of like that, but not that. And uh, and that's all I can tell you because I'm on a gag order until Monday. My video comes out Monday, and um, I will share it with you. And uh, there's something pretty cool. And then uh, what, if you once you see that, for those of you guys paying attention, you'll know that when I was talking earlier this year about, I don't know, four or five really cool things coming out, you'll know when you see this next one, oh, then not only was I telling the truth, but yeah, there's going to be like two or three more cool things coming out. So maybe... Uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, maybe, Dave, you don't need three grand to get the stuff you want. Maybe you'll be able to get that stuff a lot cheaper. I think somebody's trying to 
do something cool. I know that was cryptic and stupid. I usually don't do that stuff. I don't like to put stuff on Instagram or do stuff where I'm like, wait, do you see what I do next week? Because usually it's not that impressive. <laughs> so, but in this case, I'm very excited about this. And I hope you guys forgive me because, like I said, I would be shocked if there's not like 50 YouTube videos on Monday about this product. It'll be an onslaught. It's be my guess. It'd be my guess. Um, and the reason I say that is because anytime a company reaches out to me to do a video like this, to, to get a product before it comes out, it's usually I was last asked. <laughs> I don't want to say that because that's kind of insulting the company. They, they may have really thought of me first. And, I, and if they did, I really appreciate that. But my experience says that if a company says, hey, we got a new product that, you know, it's and we're going to send it to you early, I get an early release. Um, it's usually cause they got a dozen channels and I'm in that, you know, I got into the, I got on the list somehow and I'm glad I did. Cause this is the stuff I'm excited about. Um, so Michael says, Oh God, more, Oh, oh please God, more Freeman stuff. Not Freeman. No, I have the Freeman out, right? So the Freeman's here. I will show you guys that too, um, but um, it's not a Friedman. Okay, what else? We got a couple more subjects, and then we'll we'll cut the we'll cut the show. Uh, Landon wants everybody to know that it's Happy Friday. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wants everybody to know that Sweetwater has Reverend now. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course, I saw that. Uh, so if you guys didn't pay attention, you know, I don't know if you guys caught this. Uh, Mitch Gallagher uh, released a video or a picture of an artist or something in Sweetwater in the studio uh, with all the products behind him. And one of the products, some of the products behind him are Victory Amps. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if they make an announcement of Victory Amps at Sweetwater too, by the way. So I don't know. <laughs> That's definitely a rumor. Uh, then I'm starting, <laughs> but, but there is a picture it's on Mitch Gallagher's Facebook, um, of an artist. And in the background, there's orange amps, there's, uh, Friedman amps, uh, there's a Saldano, I think. And then, uh, there, oh, there's an EVH amp and then there's victory amps back there. So I would imagine they're getting, like I said, my guess is, uh, with all this new money that he's got, they're going to be getting a lot of new stuff. Everybody. Uh, and Bud's saying Victory is now at uh, uh, Chicago Music Exchange. I would imagine they keep growing. Like I said, if you guys recall, you guys have heard my critiques of uh, the, the Victory company um, and, and the issues I've had with them. But as you guys also know, the BD1 was one of my favorite amps. I would not be shocked one day if I try to figure out how to get one back in my hands again. Amanda says she enjoys the teasers. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that. Like I said, it's not, I wouldn't, I'm not doing it intentionally. Literally, I have a legitimate NDA gag order. I cannot share this with you until the 30th, which is Monday. But I just wanted to let you know because, uh, you know, something's cool on Monday. So have your, have your ducats in a line, your money in the, in ready to go. A more affordable, fun little thing. Uh, Okay. Anything else before we go? <laughs> I know I'm all quiet now. Is it a new clip on tuner? No. Uh, okay. Um, I want to try to go back and see if there was another question or two I missed. I'm looking at the timeline. We have a little bit more time. And I see, I, I see a couple, I see Kevin did a, a question. He said, short scale base recommendation for uh, less than a thousand dollars, something with great stock pickups. Um, prefer 30 inch. I, I like the, the Mesa Ibanez base. It's a 30 inch scale base. Great base. Uh, not great pickups. They're okay. They're good. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying that because they're stock and the base is like $300. They're probably fine. I, I remember thinking they were pretty cool. Um, but for under a thousand bucks, you can get that base and get yourself any pickups you want and you'll still be sub probably 550 bucks, $600. Definitely would recommend that.
Um, okay, hold on. Okay, and then Blue says, Hey, Phil, thoughts on the new Main Japan Aerodyne strats? Uh, looking for something a bit different during lockdown uh, that I can't buy. Unplayed guitar therapy. Uh, yeah, I have I have played the Made in Japan Aerodyne basses and Stratocaster guitars. Fantastic guitars. I like the whole, uh, you know, the rounded body concept. Of course, they're Made in Japan. They play really good. They're really cool. I don't know. I haven't seen the, what you're saying as an announcement. They've always had them, uh, but sometimes they reissue them and sometimes they expand them to different markets. Obviously, because your money's in, it says NZ and then five. So obviously, you're not in the United States. So uh, maybe it's new to that market. The whole Fender Made in Japan thing is kind of strange. It's like all this stuff's available in Japan and then sometimes it's available other places. So, but I've played a bunch of them and the only compl complaints I've ever had about any of the Aerodyne stuff is um, outside of Japan, very limited colors, always black, sometimes red, white. Um, but in Japan, you can get all kinds of crazy colors. And I always wish they would just open up all the crazy colors. But other than that, no, definitely a, a strong guitar, really worth checking out for sure. Oh, okay. Wargasm 644, 644 says, Phil, what are your thoughts? Because obviously I was talking about how I'm an Allison Chains fan. He says, wants to, know, wants to know my thoughts on the new uh, Jerry Cantrell uh, Gibson. Uh, you know, that stuff to me is... <laughs> so I'm sorry if I just breathed into the mic with my nose, but, you know, it's like I'm sighing. I don't know how to explain that stuff to me, I see that post like you guys, it comes through my Instagram and I'm not sure who that's for. And I, and I don't know, you know what I mean? That stuff's not for me. Like, I, I don't know how to pr process all this. Like, Hey Gibson, we got another guitar. That's 10 grand. I don't know who that's for, you know, uh, that's for, I think the person who's loves Jerry Cantrell, loves Gibson, you know, uh, has the kind of scratch to throw around 10 grand. You know what I mean? It's a collector's piece. There's a definitely look, like I said, investors logic, you know, you can buy a guitar like that and sit on it and it'll, it'll appreciate, you know what I mean? In the worst case, it'll stay the same. It'll flatline. But to me as a player who like all the guitars I buy, I buy them to play them. Even if I think they're going to go up in value, I still want to play them. I don't have a, a guitar that I just, you know, bought for the investment potential. The gym, floral gym's the closest, but I didn't buy it for investment potential. I bought it because I just wanted one of my, my, like my whole, you know, my literally whole guitar life is I wanted a gym. Um, and that's why I got one. Um, and that stuff never really, uh, made sense to me. I, I have a Gibson R9. If you guys watch my collection video, I, I showed the Gibson R9. The Gibson R9, I thought about doing a video on that. You know what I mean? Um, but in that video, it's very interesting concept in a video because if I reviewed it, I'd feel like I have to tell you guys why I have one. I have a Gibson R9 because it's a holy grail guitar for someone to own. That's, that's reality of it. You, you know, owning a Gibson R9, a you know, uh, one of these Murphy labs, you know, all this stuff. It's so, you know, Oh, you got one. It's so cool. But that's not why I bought it. I bought it because I, I actually needed it for a project that I was doing, uh, a business project that had nothing to do with YouTube. And it was a good, it was like, okay, that's a justification to get it. Also, um, all those guitars, like those kind of guitars, like those R nines, um, you, they make them all the time every year and they make way more than I think that the market can handle. And that's why they said, so you just, I found one as a good deal. I bought it. I remember I bought mine brand new. Mine was brand new from 2016. The store I bought it from has two, they had two brand new 2016 ones still sitting around. You, you understand like a lot of those guitars, like I told you guys, I was, you know, obviously a dealer for 12 years. That would happen to my store too. We would buy high end guitars like that and they could sit for years and here's what's funny. In that case, in that guitar, what happened was uh, when that came out in 2016, that R9, I think they were six grand. Because I have all the original paperwork and everything. And I think the retail or the street price was 6,000 change was the what Gibson suggested 
the dealers sell it for. And, um, and of course now there's seven, you know what I mean? So here's what's funny. So even though it's, it's, it's new and it's also been sitting on a wall for many years, it's now a thousand, two thousand $2,000 cheaper than the new R nines because it's on the old pricing logic, but then, but also cause it sat there for four years because I bought it last year, uh, they were willing to give me a deal. And then even a deeper deal, if I gave them cash, because they're a, a small dealer, so s- small mom and pop dealers, obviously will, uh, they, everybody thinks it's because they don't claim taxes. It, you're pretty much, it, it's possible, but most likely, like I said, I, I, customers always tell me too, like, I'll pay you cash, that way I don't have to pay tax. I'm like, I still have to pay the taxes. You have to deposit the money somewhere. They, they, they know, <laughs> right? <laughs> the only way to the only way to get away with that is you can't ever deposit this money. If you deposit cash in the bank, it goes in your business account. Then 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 it's there. You have to count where it goes for. Especially with the computerized POS systems like I had, uh, point of sale systems. Um, but uh, the advantage, believe it or not, was credit cards. Credit cards, and I'll end on this note. Whether you realize or not, credit cards, you have to pay those fees. Right, right. So I had to pay fees, and small businesses can't get the fee deals that bigger businesses get. Okay, so even my wife was pretty aggressive when negotiating, and she got our credit card fees down to I think one and one and a half percent, which are pretty good. I think it was one point two percent, which is really really cheap for a credit card processing uh, for a size business that uh, we did and stuff. And so that meant you know n- not a huge amount, right? But a guitar like that. Think about that. You've processed $6,000. I got to pay 1% of that, which is 60 bucks to the credit card processing fee. But what you don't realize is is that most people who can afford a $6,000 guitar put that on a credit card with a points program. And those points you get, that percentage back, that's who pays it. I did, the retailer. So if you got a 1% back program, I paid another $60. I had to pay for your points. (laughs) <laughs> that's that's how it works. So I had to pay $120 as a dealer just to process a premium uh, credit card like that, a points credit card. So if somebody says, oh, I'll pay you cash, well, I could immediately discount that back to the customer, give you a deal, and it didn't change anything of what I saw. You know what I mean? And better yet, if I gave you 60 bucks off, I made 60 bucks if you had a points card. And that's, and, and that's, and that's if you guys don't know this, that that's if it's in network. So if somebody came with an out of network credit card or heaven forbid, out of the country, out of network credit card, then there's more fees for being out of the network, which most nowadays, you know, if you even a small business is going to have most networks in their system, because again, it wasn't like when it started, you know what I mean? When I started my business in 2004, credit card processing was a nightmare compared to what it is now. But the reason I tell you all that is um, my Gibson R9 uh, I bought it brand new, even though it's sitting in the store for four years, but brand new. I paid, uh, from what I can tell, I paid about $2,500 less than they're going for used on Reverb. So, so I bought it. <laughs> I know I can flip it for what I paid for it right now. I know, I know that because somebody already offered me what I paid for it and I didn't want to do it yet. Um, so, uh, why do I say that? All it ties into this thing. I, that's how I end up with a Gibson R9. I don't know how somebody just throws down 10 grand for the, you know, for the Jerry Contrail guitar, if they're not, you know, just going to flip it. Um, cause like I said, there's all kinds of collectors that buy stuff just cause they know it goes up in value and flips it. I'm not in the guitar flipping business. It's, you know what I mean? If I'm selling guitars, it's, I, I've said this a million times. If I sell guitars now, or amps. It is solely and exclusively for one reason and one reason only, and has been that way for the last couple of years. I physically don't have room in the house because that's the thing when gear shows up. Sometimes companies give you gear, sometimes companies leave the gear, and then I like to have the stuff I have, and you know, and this is how many amps I can fit in this room, what you see behind me. <laughs> so there's actually a little bit more uh, amps up, up higher. Uh, so, so you get the idea, but that's how many can fit. And same thing with guitars. There's only so many guitars I can fit. So when you guys see me with guitars, it, it's very rarely because I don't like a guitar. If I'm getting rid of guitars, just because physically, I, you know, I I just don't have room. I I now have I now have three friends that are large YouTubers that I've talked to over the years that tell me they have storage storage facilities for the gear. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Not, I told my wife, I refuse to buy, because in Arizona, I need air conditioned. I'm not buying for an air conditioned storage facility to stick the gear in. That's just doing it. So Johnny says, because they're loaded. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> like I said, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. 
But like I, I always say this, just because I have, you know, just because uh, someone has, somebody got millions of dollars and still just, they just, they don't, they're not going to buy anything crazy like that. Uh, and I've seen that to be the case many times more than not. I think just like I said, somebody really wants it and they get it or somebody's going to flip it. So there you go. On that note, we're going to, we're going to call it in. We did two hours. So I hope it was a good show for you guys. It was a good show for me. Um, something new I want to show you guys. Look at this. These are the New Year crew. I want to start uh, at the end of the show since uh, the diehards hang out to the end. Uh, these are all my top tier patrons that support this live show. Why? Because I want to thank them because they're great people. But also, you have to understand this live show is sponsored by these, these patrons. These patrons and... These patrons, these are my super supporters. I have three tiers. I have the five, ten, and twenty-five dollar tier. And uh, and before you guys say anything crazy, I want to let you know that the average patron, uh, my average patron, has been with me for over two years. So I want to thank them all for them. They literally support this entire show. Um, and I promise uh, within the next week or two, I will get the $5 patrons on a screenshot so you can see your names. I'm talking between the names. See, I just want to start doing that. Uh, and uh, just to say thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to the moderators. Again, all of this stuff makes this show happen every week. And uh, I can talk as candid as I want because we don't have any corporate sponsors or big company sponsors. It's just sponsored by you guys. So uh, if you guys feel I'm not giving the show I want, I'm sure you guys won't support the channel anymore. So I want to thank you all for that. And on that note, I'm going to thank you guys for your time. Until next week, I'm going to say, know your gear. <laughs>